there were some leaks in the bottom of the reservoirs, and therefore the ground was uh, permeated, and uh, consequently the underground water was polluted. That's to say the first water layer above the water layer from which we can take drinkable water. It was necessary to reclaim the land and plow the land, take the waste which was in the ground of uh, La Chiarella, and then bring it to waste disposal plants in Germany. Up to date, the drainage cost around uh, 22 million and 500,000 euros. Now, to have a land which can be devoted to a possible public use, a complete reclamation of the land is needed, which will cost around 9 million euros. Andrea Rossi has been repeatedly condemned by many tribunals for illegal disposal of uh, hazardous and toxic waste, fulfilled without the regional authorization. He was condemned by the then magistrate's courts, by the magistrate of Lecco and the magistrate of Monza, by the magistrate of Milan and the magistrate of Turin. From a point of view of resume, you can see that I devoted my life to energy and to installations in the field of energy. In the years where he was working here, he didn't produce a single drop of oil, as far as we know. What it did was creating just the media event. He was able to persuade, in a way that I cannot explain, a good portion of public opinion, and that's exactly what is hard for me to explain. He persuaded technicians of the field, scientists, and important institutions, such as the region of uh, Lombardia, that he was able to do magic. Petrol Dragon is the past, but the present, and maybe the future, is energy catalyzer. March 29, 2011, two authoritative Swedish physicists flew to Bologna from Stockholm. The president of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science, Sven Kulander, professor of theoretical physics and president of the Swedish Skeptics Society, Hanno Essen. Rossi prepared a smaller device, more stable one. It is a test which is fundamental to evaluate the reliability of the system. For almost six hours, energy catalyzer produced energy in front of the two Swedish physicists. Have you been Were you impressed by the test conducted in Bologna? Yes, because you produce something, uh, uh, you, you produce power that cannot be explained according to my opinion by chemical processes. We have here some uh, source of energy that, that seems to be radically new and uh, very stable and uh, reliable also, as opposed to many other uh, cold fusion experiments, they, they have been very vague and difficult to reproduce. Do you think that the reaction taking place in the reactor is a nuclear one? Yes, uh, that's what I believe. I mean, I, I have been convinced that we have uh, an energy production which is hard to explain by other means. Can you exclude the use of tricks in the device? Uh, not entirely. I don't suspect any trickery. I mean, none of us have found any trace, any signs of trickery, even if I admit that we have never checked everything. The Swedish scientists also couldn't see the core of uh, Rossi's device. Nobody, including Professor Focardi, knows the additive secrets introduced by Rossi to turn a reaction which produced few watts into a high-energy reaction. Rossi says he uses a powder of enriched nickel in which probably there are more isotopes with greater atomic numbers close to that of copper. Sven Kulander analyzed a sample of the nickel powder that according to Rossi was used for two months and a half inside the energy catalyzer. He found out that 10% was made of copper. How do you explain the presence of copper in the ash? Well, it could... Uh... If it had not been put in, it, or if it could have been, uh, well, I don't know, it could, if it's some surrounding copper and it had been lost, it would be, it would be too, too much probably to, to be that. Otherwise, it should be a nuclear process that the nickel captures a proton and it then forms uh, uh, copper. For, for Rossi and other people, maybe the, the, the way 
the fact that it works <laughs> is the is the most important, of course. But uh, the, to understand the science, because it's very mysterious at this point, uh, I don't understand it, and I don't know anyone who does really. Do you think Andrea Rossi understands what happens in the reactor? Uh, no, I don't think he understands it more than uh, many other. <laughs> but when he tries to explain to us how he how he understands it, uh, we no, I I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, he talks about pressure and so on. It's uh, it's interesting, but uh, very heuristic and a bit intuitive. Uh, I think he has ma is mainly a practical guy. <laughs> if there is a nuclear, if there is a real nuclear fusion, Rossi and Focardi would deserve to win the Nobel Prize, don't you think so? Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I, uh, it has, of course, to be evaluated and seen how. Um, but I, <laughs> I mean, if, if this uh, this is so fantastic, so if uh, I, I think I could agree to that, it's such a fantastic discovery if it's true. I, I, it's hard for me to believe it because it's against all my physics, uh, uh, physics knowledge so far. Waiting for an academic recognition, Andrea Rossi is working on the commercial launch of Energy Catalyzer, which should be not far off. The surprise is that Athens will be the capital of the new energy world order. Why is Greece so advanced in the field? We're still good, although the financial problems of Greece, we're still good, we believe, we know international markets, okay, we have experience, and uh, we are the first ones who believe to Rossi and his product. The October event we referred to a one megawatt uh, uh, plant, which will be inaugurated <coughs> at our facilities in Santi, to furnish our energy needs. However, we will also use it as a, as a presentation or as a, as a, as a showcase for future, uh, future potentially interested parties. Is Energy Catalyzer ready for the market? We have the final products in our, a product in our hands. Yeah. Not the experimental one. Exactly the one that we are going to produce. It works. It works excellent. Actually, the device, what we are going to uh, sell or, let's say, provide, there's a light, slight distinction between selling and, and providing in our terms, is going to be a 10 kilowatt uh, device producing solely heat. How much will it consume in terms of fuel and money? Actually, uh, the uh, end user, uh, again, speaking about households, in the first place, will have no other, let's say, charges or, or costs except for the, the said lease, uh, lease, uh, leasing fee because uh, we will uh, provide all the ingredients within this, this uh, device. How many devices will you rent out? Well, as many as we can produce. <laughs> so we can, as a, a rule, of, uh, rule of thumb, we can uh, we assume uh, a final, at full capacity, of course, uh, output a factory of uh, around 300,000 units per year. A factory already in production, two still on paper. Defcalion Green Technologies seems to have real intentions. In few months, it wants to put on the market hundreds of thousands of energy catalyzers. But who's behind the company? Uh, Defcalion is funded by a group of uh, non-governmental entities. It's not just private investors, but they are entities uh, also in industry, but they are non-governmental and they're international. Well, there is a group of investors, I, would, I have to tell you about 10 names, which I am not allowed to say yet. Uh, okay. They come from different parts of the world, representative interests from different types of uh, different uh, parts of the world, actually. Uh, but How much money will be invested in the project? Well, uh, to cover uh, Greece and uh, Balkans, we estimated about 200 million. We believe that Greece will be the pathfinder of another government for other countries. I believe it 100% and our investors believe it 100% and of course if you see the messages we are getting, all over the world they believe it 100%. Uh, there are several countries, important countries, who are already requesting to work and buy the product for us. A great revolution, if it really works. There are still too many secrets, industrial and commercial ones, 
which prevent full evaluation of the scope of Andrea Rossi's invention. Can we believe him? Uh, Hardworking, intelligent, uh, creative uh, person, knowledgeable, careful. I, I, he's, he's an impressive person. As far as I know him, he uh, was a very nice man. Uh, was very charming. I mean, uh, he could uh, sell his products very well. He was definitely very intelligent, a genius. I would say that Andrea Rossi is a picturesque character. Mr. Rossi is uh, uh, the type for me of the professor. He's very solid on what he's saying, and at the end of the day, he proved uh, not only one time, several times, what he is saying is right. You know, he invented a system uh, to make money, which is detrimental for the community. He's a man that uh, suffered a lot in Italy, but despite that, uh, he is bringing back his discovery to Italy.